What's up guys? Welcome to 1010 Talk. Um, yes, yet another channel name change. Uh, so nothing really is going to happen. Nothing crazy is going to happen. Um, just know that it's just me from now on, guys. Uh, no more AJ, no more Jared, just me. So what I'm going to try and do too is have Patrick back on the channel if I can uh, for some guest appearances. I'm going to talk to him about it. Yes, we still talk. Um, no, there wasn't some crazy huge fallout between me and him. So uh, stay tuned for that. But let's get to today's topic. I want to talk Basel World 2018. So instead of sort of just doing my top three picks and top three misses or top five picks, blah, 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 I have an entire list on my Mac right now. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go through rapid fire of watches that I liked and disliked from various brands. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Quick, quick, quick wrist watch check. Um, I'm wearing a vintage piece that you guys will see an unboxing for very very soon so stay tuned for that so let's go ahead and talk about the elephant in the room Rolex at Basel World 2018 a lot of people said they stole the show um, I tend to agree with them uh, for different reasons though first thing the Rolex deep sea seed weller <clears throat> um, a lot of you guys will know this as the deep sea deep blue I'm posting images on the screen I got a lot of work to do with all these Im images it has wider lugs um, or wider lug width. I think the lugs are, are profiled a little bit um, thinner, so it wears better on the wrist, but with the wider lug width, I think it's still gonna be massive. Um, the Pepsi, I do love the Je Jubilee, um, but the Pepsi in steel is kind of like uh, everyone saw it coming, so I don't think it's really that exciting. Um, new movement, uh, the Pepsi bezel, um, and the Jubilee bracelet is actually really nice I, and I like how it sort of is custom fitted right up to the case and the Jubilee pattern goes right up to the case um, but I know you can't swap out an oyster uh, okay so the white gold blue dial Pepsi is super cool and a big time sleeper I'm gonna try and post a live photo that I've seen um, from around different uh, blogs and stuff like that the the dial is very very blue um, I think it might be nicknamed either like the Spider-Man or the Superman because it is, it is just red and blue all over. I really, really love that piece. Um, the white dial, Oyster Perpetual. No one's really talking about that. The Oyster Perpetual 39, really love that, but I'm a sucker for white dials. So, um, very cool option there. The Root Beer, quite possibly my favorite release of all of Basel 2018. 100% my favorite release from Rolex. Um, I've always been a huge fan of the Root Beer. The root beer GMTs from like the 70s and the 80s, the two tones and the full gold ones. So Rolex decided to make this Ever Rose in two, or an Ever Rose model, which is full red gold, and also a two tone model, which is very cool. Now they decided to put the oyster on this one. I kind of wish, uh, I'm sure I'll see some mock ups in the future with a Jubilee on uh, the Ever Rose, but I think a Jubilee on the two tone on the Ever Rose root beer would have been pretty cool. Um, the Evero's Rainbow Daytona, uh, pretty ridiculous, pretty garish, whatever, right? <clears throat> Tudor, another big, uh, big company that had some really cool releases at Basel. Uh, the Pepsi GMT, known as the Diet Pepsi, I've seen that floating around a lot. Uh, incredible value prop at under, under four grand. Um, otherwise, I'm kind of like whatever about it, to be honest. Um, I do like the snowflake hand on the GMT hand. Um, but there's something about the bezel uh, and the numerals that kind of throw me off a little bit. It, it does have that vintage vibe, which is really cool. And I totally understand if it's one of your guys' favorite releases. Um, another one of my favorite releases of Basel 2018 by far is the Black Bay 58. Absolutely love that watch. Um, the 41 was pretty good, but it, uh, it, a lot of people, including myself, complained that it was a little bit too thick. I think it's around just about 15 millimeters thick. Um, this new Black Bay 58 is 11.7 millimeters thick. So think old Seamaster Bond, if you guys have ever handled one of those. Just under 12 is perfect, and 39 millimeters. Um, I saw someone on Instagram, uh, a pretty notable person on Instagram, saying it, it wears exactly like a Rolex 14060 which, as some of you may or may not know, is the pre-ceramic Rolex sub um, from the 90s and the 2000s. So if that's, if that's true and if that's any indication of how it really does wear, um, I think it's gonna be a huge hit. And I'm sure you guys have seen on Houdinki, Ben Kleiman has already professed his love for it. 
Um, Seiko, Seiko had a really cool year. They've been they've been killing it the last couple of years. They have the uh, the Tuna reissue and the 6159 reissue, um, known as the SLA 025, and then the Tuna is the S23626. Uh, I know the Tuna is sort of like a, is a throwback to the old. I think it's called like the the Godfather or the Grandfather Tuna. I might be wrong on that, but uh, the 6159. Heard about this a couple months ago. It's cool to see that the rumors were true. Very cool that they fitted it with a high beat, um, high beat movement, but it is really pricey, which kind of sucks. Um, and then they have the Prospects version of the Remaster, uh, which is the SPB 077 and 079. Uh, very cool, very cool watch. Um, I think it's a little bit thinner than the Marine Master was as well. It's a little bit cheaper. It also has the six R movement, which is eh, kind of whatever. But um, I absolutely hate the arrow hands. They've been using that handset for all prospects models under a thousand dollars for the last couple um, Last couple of years or the last since Basil last year. I think and I absolutely hate it uh, Bell and Ross had a really cool Racing inspired chronograph uh, that is very reminiscent of the Tudor heritage chrono. I love the funky 70s design of that um, It's called the, uh, the BR V2-94 Put a picture real quick. Really love that watch. I think that's really cool. I think it's priced uh, reasonably well too. The Nomos, uh, the Nomos Audubon. So I love Nomos. You guys know I own a Nomos. Uh, a very interesting layout. I think it has like a tachymeter or a speedometer, or not tachymeter, um, an odometer or a speedometer or whatever. Um, cool idea. It's not really for me. Um, I don't think it really speaks to the heritage, um, their heritage with the whole Bauhaus design. Um, besides the fact that it is the Audubon and it's German. Um, but I don't think it's going to sell that well because I think Nomos is, is well known for their very simple design style dress watches like the Orion or the Tangente. Um, so this Autobahn is sort of out of left field. Oris had a great showing. Um, the, one of my favorites, again, um, the Oris 65 bronze bezel. Absolutely love it. I think two-tone is back um, and I think they came up with a super creative idea to come up with a two-tone here. Um, the bronze pilot 36 millimeter. Also a watch that I absolutely love that I would consider picking up in the future. $1,900 retail, so it's going to be way less than that gray market. Um, it's really small, obviously at 36 millimeters, but it'll wear probably a little bit bigger since it's a pilot watch. Um, and great value prop there. And I, I love bronze watches too. I still miss my Tudor Black Bay bronze. Uh, the Big Crown Pro Pilot um, 114, caliber 114. It's a 10-day power reserve. Super cool technology. Well, maybe not technology, nothing innovative, but... Super cool that uh, that Oris is doing something like this, um, kind of pushing the envelope with their in-house uh, watchmaking. Uh, super cool movement, huge mainstream barrel. I'm gonna put put a picture up for you guys. It looks ridiculous on the case back. It's a, a display back there, uh, but it is really pricey at 5,500 Swiss francs. A um, little too much, even with the heavy discount that it's probably gonna hit take. Longine. Not a fan of the DLC um, Legend Heritage Diver. Uh, I love the Heritage Diver. I think the DLC is completely pointless. I don't think it's going to sell well. Um, I do like that they include a 36 millimeter and I think 34 millimeter option as well with some crazy like purple dials, almost Fume style like Moser. Um, and they do have a, uh, a new military watch that I really dislike because they're taking the Faux Patina, Faux Tina as it's known. Uh, to the next level by sort of introducing this fake wear on the dial, not even just patina, but like fake residue on the dial. And just that's that's going too far for me. Just get a vintage piece if you want that. Hydro Conquest now has the long overdue ceramic bezel. Um, I really do like the, the uh, rubber version. It's sort of like integrated up right into the case. That is a cool looking watch, probably a pretty good value there too. Um, I've seen a couple pictures on Instagram floating around. I haven't seen any press releases at all about a single crown super, super compressor Nautilus um, from Longine, which is super cool too. It's like a, a 60s, 70s style diver. No information on that yet, but it does look very nice um, and definitely is a nice throwback for Longine. Tag and Zenith going uh, their Jean-Claude Biffer ways. Um, with the Hublot cues, lots of skeleton dials coming out, which, you know, if that's your if that's your thing, that's cool. Um, they even have this thing with Swiss Beats. It's like a, an orange and white and steel titanium or something like that. I don't even remember what it was. I vaguely remember reading about it. Um, 
it's kind of, it's like whatever i'm not a huge fan of that that's from zenith um love the defy classic though uh very very um conservative uh contemporary zenith um and i definitely admire the defy zero g they had the defy lab that came out last year so they're pushing the envelope with technology which is super cool i know tag just came out with a, a bamford monaco absolutely hate that tasteless in my opinion sorry guys grand seiko nothing crazy here they um are always come out with coming out with gorgeous pieces. I think they stepped it up, stepped it up this year a little bit with the crazy dial patterns and the really cool color schemes. Um, they have a couple vintage reissues too from the 60s that are very, very cool. Um, Laurent Ferrier, uh, absolute love Laurent Ferrier. He has, uh, I love the Galet and they have a Galet minute repeater uh, with kind of this salmon dial. Um, it's beautiful and minute repeaters are one of my favorite complications. So just thought I'd throw that in. Patek, uh, I know they just came out with their Instagram, better late than never, right? Um, the rose gold, pilot, rose gold Pilot that they came out with, same as the Pilot from last year, the New York Pilot Edition. It's whatever, I'm not really interested in it. Not, Patek doesn't really interest me that much. It's obviously part of the Holy Trinity, but I still think they're overpriced um, for the most part. Uh, the white gold Nautilus Perpetual looks cool, but then again, it's, you know, I don't really care. It's, it's a perpetual calendar in a in a true sports watch, like what the hell is that all about, right? Um, Omega, of course, the SMP 1948 coaxial. Really love that watch. It's uh, it's like the old bumpers from the early 50s. Uh, obviously, it's a 1948 reissue. Um, love the thick lugs on that master coaxial. I don't know if it's going to sell that well. Uh, it might be, you know, I don't think it's going to rise in value at all or anything, but I think it's a, it's a great, great watch. Um, the Wave Dial SMP ceramic seamaster professional actually not a fan of this guys um i know a lot of i've been talking to a lot of people and a lot of people absolutely love it i prefer the bond watches of old from the 90s the original bond smps um, and i actually prefer the last year's model of the seamaster ceramic uh seamaster professional smpc as we call it for short right I prefer last year's SMP more than the Wave. I just think the Wave is, is too much uh, for uh, a ceramic watch like that. I don't know, most of you guys are probably gonna disagree with me like with that. The Apollo 8 Omega, Dark Side of, Dark Side of the Moon. I, I don't know what the hell this is all about. To me, this is 100% a racing speedy um, at first glance. The dial, the, the, um, the inner chapter ring, the colors, the, even, the, even the strap, everything sp screams racing speedy. So I don't know how they're, they're you know, turning this into a Dark Side of the Moon Apollo 8 version. Um, it is cool what they did with the dial with the, I think the 1869 caliber as opposed to the 1861. They switched it up a little bit. Um, hate it, I don't really like it at all. Um, then they have the new CK2998. I don't know if that's the exact reference, but it's the Pulsation um, 2998, as I call it, panda dial. Um, it has the pulsometer instead of the tachymeter right around the ring. Um, something is kind of boring about this watch to me, not a huge fan. In my opinion, Omega didn't do a great job this year, but next year is the anniversary of the moon landing, so expect some crazy moon watches next year. Um, Breitling, really not much to say about Breitling. I've always at least for the last few years, pretty much disliked Breitling. Um, I know they're trying to go in a new direction. They have, they just signed Charlize Theron and Brad Pitt as brand ambassadors. So that's an interesting move. I know they just got their um, new CEO not long ago and they um, were acquired by a private equity firm last year, I think. Um, I do like this all satin or brushed, whatever it is, Chronomat 44 with the B01 movement. Um, I like that Breitling is coming out with something like that that's not all polished and looks absolutely ridiculous. But for the most part, um, I really don't care about anything that Breitling released this year. So I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> so let me know what you guys think in the comments. What were your favorites? I think for sure, for me, it was the Rolex Root Beer, um, the Tudor Black Bay 58, and the Aorus 65 with the bronze bezel two-tone. Um, a lot of two-tone action this year. Um, so let me know what you guys think, what your favorites are, and I will see you guys in the next video.